Howdy everybody, Big Fat Plus, and welcome back to the Big Man Plays Planescape Torment. Last left off, we became a godsman. And my, my sound's a bit off here. But we became a godsman, and now we're going to go see the uh, uh, the secret project with this godsman token. Now I just gotta find where this um, here secret project is. It's like I like to see it, but I need to. Um... All right. I need to. Oh wait, I know where it is. Herpeter. It's only the place with a oh, with an unlocked door or locked door. The armory. I want to see this here secret project. Would have done last time, but probably would have took too long, and I was already over time as it was. May I help you? Uh, sure, token. I got, I got a token. Cause I'm still going with my mistakes. Uh, may I help you? Think? Uh, no. Good day. We're going to see this here. Uh, oh. What the fuck is this? Good day, sir. May I help you with something? Um, where can I find a higher up here? Either send those or kill or should be able to aid you in the matter. Kill is the main meeting hall just to the door on the right side. Send those can you be found in the rooms near the rear of the hall. Um, thank you. I don't need the clerk's office. Weapons work. You see a tiefling clad in godsman clothing, carefully examining the thing in the center of the room. Can we talk right now? We're at a critical phase. Uh, critical phase of what? Yes, this project we're working on is a weapon that could have massive peacetime applications as well. We're not close to the end, but we are at a delicate phase. Delicate enough that it would put us all in a dead book if some burp fa fails us now. Uh, what is it you're doing? We're adjusting the variables and devices lower magical resonances. One mistake can sink the whole project, and if the project goes under, it'll take us all out in the resulting magical wave. Um, I see. Can I have some mystery? What do you want to know? Um, what is this thing? You know, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, goody! You're making a weapon that you don't even... Never mind. You'd have to speak to one of the engineers for information. I know that it has a massive focus beam of heat. We perfected the part of it, that part of it at least. We've even mounted it permanently into the device. There are aspects of the thing we're not even gun working on yet. We're not allowed to see them until we're done with these portion. Why all the secrecy? If you know an enemy was creating weapon use against you, wouldn't you do everything in your power to destroy it? We've got no idea who it's for, even. We're just trusting the word of our high ups that it won't be used in a way we'll disagree with. None of us know who's asking us to make it, so there's no chance we'll spill the dark of it to someone who wants to see it destroyed. Especially because we're all sealed our lives on it. Ooh. What do you mean by that? Because of the nature of this project, with the secrecy and all that, not to mention the magic still allow us to even work on the machine. We've had to seal a part of our lives into the machine. We get our lives back when the project's done, but if it malfunctions or powers forbid gets sabotaged, it takes our lives with it when it blows. Oh. Sounds bad. I have a question for you. How long till it's done so I can use it? I mean, probably won't be done for another decade. Oh boy. But the trickiest part will be done this year. There are some magical rituals that have to be done, and those take time. We'll all breathe easier knowing we're not sealed to a project that's going to detonate because it's unstable. I have other questions, because I think I see to answer those. You can tell me who the project's being built for? No, I can't tell you that. For one thing, I don't know. For another, I've signed a secrecy contract that binds my life to the integrity of the project. If the project fails, I could die. And so could all my friends here. I ain't taking that risk. Yeah, okay. Um, 
Tell about the engineers of the project. Our chief engineer, Neil Zander, is an utter genius. He has created works I never dreamed possible. Or does he even created a folding portal and is working on a dream builder in his spare time. It was said that long ago his family was contracted to create this machine for a man who could not dream himself. I'm certain there's someone right here. Our other engineer, Belda Lynn, is newer but equally bright. She's a little rag, but her work shows great promise and skill. You can usually find the main entrance hall. Great, in the meantime, more questions, because yes, I must ask everything. Uh, what can you talk about your boss? You usually find her somewhere. She's a gifter side who's got gags out from her people. She's working here because she doesn't get seen much and so her shame is lessened. She's brilliant and hard-minded. I wonder if she'd talk to my friend Takan here. I would be honored to meet another outcast, another exile. Perhaps the sharing of our shame will lessen its sting for both of us. We'll speak to her soon enough, friend. In the meantime, I had other questions for everyone here. Eh, yeah, what do you want to know? Uh... Uh, what is this project, I think? It's a weapon, I think. We're not sure if it's for war or hunting. Powers above, if it's for hunting, I don't want to see the creature it's designed to kill. Why would you think something that big is for hunting? What the hell are you hunting for crying out loud? A frickin' Jen Morin? Those who play Monster Hunter know that reference. But when we're done here, it's going to be on a par with that chaos ship the Doom Guard built a few years back with Tanari. At least that's the theory. Okay, farewell. Kalira. <laughs> See a glitzer's eye woman, bald with scarred cheeks and a cat's grace in her walk. As she turns toward you, she spies the Khan. Her eyes widen. She addresses him. You bring joy to my heart. My name is Calera. May I aid you? What? My companion would like to speak with you concerning the workings of this device. May he speak for the two of us. She looks at you and looks back at him quizzically. Of course, esteemed one. If you speak for him and accept responsibility for keeping what passes here secret. She turns her attention reluctantly at you. You have questions for me? Uh, yes. Then ask, and I will tell you if I may. Your companion carries the burden of your secrecy in this matter as a part of his own honor. And where I know not if I can trust you, I know I trust him. Dekan's got some sway. Tell me what this device does. Our device spouts forth a certain type of magical fire that harms even those resistant to ordinary fire. We're working on applications that might even get around a creature's magical resistance. What other applications it might have? Aside from its weapon values, it could be used as an excellent mining device. Okay, I, I get that. If tuned properly, it could harvest whole swaths of forests or fields of grain. It could harden a shell of Limbo's material for a time. We have even tried a lesser application of the technology there are, or even be used as propulsion across the spheres of Kasseri. It uses are limited by one's imagination. It is not purely a weapon of destruction. Interesting. Yeah, ask some more questions for me. Who is contracted this device? I would like to speak to them. She glances around, sighs, and replies, Though I did not take part in the negotiations, I believe that it was the Vatsero who had procured our services. The token you wear will grant you some measure of diplomacy immunity to better who you may meet. Sure be you, sir. Answer some other questions if you would. What can you tell me of the engineers? She scowls, adding several creases to her scarred face. Speak to one of the smiths if you would know of the engineers. No kind words for the engineers will you hear from me. Uh, why not? Why? because they do not seem to share a love for this project as do their comrades, because they are dreamers and do none of the action themselves.
because ultimately I do not trust that their intentions mean well for us, but instead benefit them and them alone. I see. I mean, she's something else. Aside from Dakan, yeah, aside to Dakan, um, who is she and why does she treat you with such respect? She is of the people. Her markings tell us. See, I can't stop from being tongue tied. Her markings tell of one who has walked the path from Limbo and has been made to not know our ancestral home. Her markings tell all Glitter's Eye to render her assistance and tell that Glitter's Eye that she is still of the people. Her reference for me is the reference she shown to all Surf. Very well, Glitter. I had some other questions for you. I guess that's it. I guess I really have nothing else. Hopefully that may be made, um, uh, the con feel better about himself, but hopefully. But now we've seen the, uh, secret project, and maybe in the future we'll actually have a chance to use said project, though I'm not going to hold my breath on that at all. But now we're going to head to... The clerk's ward. Well, after talking to Baracus. Or Barkus, not Baracus. If it was Baracus, it'd be like, uh, what are you doing here for Mortal Kombat? Hmm. Oh, from it there, I was like, why are those two Harmonium officers just standing there? Once again, once again, you come to me once again. There must be something I can do for you, my brother Darren Kanate. Ha! Message just delivered. 6,000 experience. That was certainly speedy, wasn't it? My thanks, my thanks, Fred. One more task for you, and for the primary sum of 200 coins. Just take this handbill down to Barkus at the Smoldering Corpse. Oh, his name is Ghost Forever. At Smoldering Corpse, and ask him to post it somewhere. He's an old friend, so he'll gladly see it. Right. I couldn't carry any more, so I had to drop it. Seven. Okay, so now I have to... Eh, Thilden's all. Okay, that's another key item that I can't really do fuck all with. Okay, here, here, you'll carry the junk. I have to grab this here. Handbill. Done. Yes. Handbill, guilt spread, should deliver to Brock and Smolden Corpse Bar. It's a copy of the bill pen printed up for him. Guilt spread must be hard up for messages if he'll pay you 200 coins for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, save this. Just in case. Now we go to... Morning Corpse Bar is a little ways off, so we're not going that way right now. We're going to the Clerk's Ward. Okay, we're going to the... Yes, Clerk's Ward, damn it! We're now in the Clerk's Ward. Head northeast, which is uh, that way, over here up to the, up the gate. Done. Find someone named Mulder. That's a harlot. This beautiful, this beautiful, seductively attired prostitute is a far cry from those you saw in the hive. She smells of expensive perfumes, and the lines in her face are subtly accentuated with highly painted lines of soft, warm colors. She smells such a person in her. As I approach her, and Curtis Grace, greetings, good sir. Seeking to quench your lust, Miss Mistress Grace's brothel cannot satisfy. I hope. Uh, no, but I had some questions. She so puts her finger to your lips to hush you. There is but a single question I answer, good sir, and the answer is this: Yes, for only five hundred coins. Oh. Um, no thanks. A pity. Please return should you have a change of heart, good sir. I will be eagerly awaiting you. Morning. Eh, hey, say there, Chief. What do you say? How about spotting old Morty a bit of jink? It's been more than a while, you know. <laughs> Let's see him get comfortable. Sure, why not, miss? 
The old woman examines Morty critically for a time and nods. Yes, yes, I think I could do that. Well, I could certainly come up with something. All for the same fee, of course. A pity 500 commons. Actually, Morty, we're going to get going. Farewell. Not spitting 500 coins to let you get nooky. Guess I'm an asshole. This thin, sharp-faced man rushes toward you, calling your attention. Ah, oh, sir, sir! But I'm opening your time! Were you perchance here to visit the tailor? I, I would... The man breaks in. Ah, oh, sir, because I seem to have uh, offended the man. I had commissioned the hot-blooded fool to make me a costume, but he stormed me out of his shop and won't speak with me now. So, what the man... Uh, the, bleh, the man suddenly... Balls his fist and shakes him at the sky. What have I done to such such to deserve such treatment? Nothing I say. I was a patron. It was his duty to serve me. That shellish buffoon. It, what did you want from me? Eh? He focuses on you again. Oh yes, you, motherfucker. I can't beg you to enter the place and fetch my costume for me, sir. I have a masquerade to go to, and I have not the time to commission another tailor. For you, motherfucker, I'll do it, but not for free. And you, what? For the power's sake, man, you're just fetching a costume. It won't take but a moment of your time. I certainly won't think such a meager act is worth a wage, sir. Fine, I'll go visit Updated then. my journal. Oh, most excellent, sir. It is this very building right here. He points to a long, low structure just north of oh, Thank you, sir. Farewell. You know, sometimes it's hard being such a goody two shoes. Go in. Thank you. Okay, where the hell is he? Gunclaves. Hopefully, the clerk sword is far more accommodating in terms of civility, though I doubt it. This short, heavy-set, middle-aged man is wearing clothes that seem to be spun of glittering gold. In his hands, he holds a bolt of clothing strung taut across the wooden frame. He is currently embroidering some pattern into fabric. A greetings! Men don't seem to acknowledge your presence. He continues to work on his embroidery, muttering under his breath. As he sews, shimmering motes of light seem to sparkle and drop from the tip of the needle. A uh, good sir, did you hear me? The man does not look up from his work, frowning to face as he answers you. Yes, yes, and I am certain of what you need is truly quite urgent. Now, if you could be silent for just a moment. Let's wait. Probably took a day. At last, he sets down the embroidery and looks up at you. Before you could speak, however, he suddenly picks up another item and speaks and sets to work on it. Again, as he works, what looks to be tiny colored sparks drip from the fabric. Wait some more. I'm going to hit him after this is over. Finally finishes work sitting down to examine you. Greetings, I am Con Gunclaves. Now, what is it you were here to see me about? I had questions. Hmm? Huh? I hope it's about garments and the like. I shouldn't answer anything not considering myself at the store, you know. Uh, what were those lights you were embroidering? That did nothing, sir, but a bit of the art, which I at times weave into fabric when the fancy strikes me. Those items which I lay lavish enchantments upon are my most special creations and are rarely sold. What type of magic clothes you have available here? One second. Sorry about that. Someone decided to interrupt me. <sighs> Gunclades looks you over frowning. Nothing they would fit you for this, certain. I had another question then. And what am I supposed to pick up? Okay. I want to pick up a Dustman costume. You're in luck, sir. I just happen to have one available. Its cost is 30 copper commons. I'll I take it. I couldn't carry any more, so I had to drop it. Again. Gunclaves takes a set of neatly folded robes from under a counter. Here you are, sir. I would warn you, though. If this is for the upcoming masquerade of Lord Erd, many folk are already attending as Dustman. I'll keep that in mind. Farewell. Now I've got to move some shit. Uh... Here. Here's 
thief, you carry that. Now I gotta move everybody. Where'd the item go? All right. Oh, right there. Give my shit. Thank you, sir. I don't think he offers me any other. you expect it? Uh, well, uh, well, did you get my costume from Gonclaves? I forgot the voice I had for him. Yes, here it is. It cost me 30 co- uh, co uh, cost me 30 comments. Updated my journal. 8,000 experience? Okay. Uh, fine, fine, take it here. It tossed you 30 co- per comments. Now, I'll be off to- uh, wait. Gonsol said many people were going to the masquerade as dustmen. A uh, did he? A blast! I would hate to arrive with such a common costume. I could try and get another one for you, but it'll cost you. He rolls his eyes, staring at you. I should have figured. Here, you mercenary. This will be enough, I trust. He hands you 20 copper coins. That'll do. Return another copy. Updated costume. my journal. <laughs> this motherfucker ain't exactly on the up and up, so I'm definitely I'm gonna be charging. Hello, madam. It's a sensate. But I'm not joining the sensates. Because I'm a godsman! Gondley sits down, something's working on Nazi. You come again, sir. Good. What can I help you with? Had questions? Hmm, I hope this is about Gondley. So like, I shouldn't have anything not concerning myself. Blah, blah, blah. I want to pick up another different costume. Gondley's nod to smiles knowingly. The dustman bit seemed a bit too common after all, eh? Well, it just so happens that I have a godsman costume. If you would like, it shall cost you only 50 coppers. I'll take it. Gondley's re- Trees a set of folded clothes and heavy leather apron and work boots under the counter. Hey, you all, sir. Enjoy the masquerade. Uh, thank you. <sighs> He's more amiable to work with than anyone else. The man looks at you expectantly. Well, well did you get the costume companies? Here it is. It cost me 50 comments. Updated my journal. Makes it disgusting noise, snatches the costume view, and shows 50 comments in your hands. Now I've, now I have to be off. Farewell, you motherfucker. Why are you going back in? Now we've dealt with his drivel. I'm going to actually talk to the guy about buying stuff. And questions. What sort of magicals you have available? I'd like to see what they offer all the same. And this shit is expensive. Needle and thread, which which heal. I need some mirror thread. Why? I need to switch up a wool here. What? Jerk it. Let's see if we can get, uh... All he has right now is jerkin of the brazen rogue and jerkin of the flitting shot. It's the only place that sells armor type items that the walkthrough is telling me. Hmm. All usable one by half pieces of sturdy cloth made scarcely fashioned. 3228. Ooh. Cats, give me our class 6. Uh, class 4. And Thacko. I think the boost to abilities is far outweighed. I hope she has room. I can steal it. But I don't think her skill is quite high enough. Probably make a mistake, but... Whatevs. Whatever. And it's best. Armor class 8. Okay. Super so punch daggers and braces concealed. Okay. There we go. There, you're looking a little bit more spiffy, and by a little bit more spiffy, I mean you are the same. What 
is your pickpocket right now? 75%. I probably could have. Oh well. Oh well. Let's see here. Now where are we going? Done. Oh, it's some uh, harmonium. They might be able to tell me what the hell's going on right here. So our dread armor figure is standing in place, carefully watching passes by. You dimly recall that his ornate armor marks him as an officer of the harmonium, one who provides all force of precision. Greetings! The man's eyes move over the words and habits rather than you when he speaks. Move along. I had some questions. The moment's attention is still directed at passes by. It takes a moment to look at you nice. Nothing for you here. Move along. I just need you to answer a few questions. Shakes his head. Speak to a citizen, then. I have a job to do here, and I won't neglect to speak with you or anyone else. Now move along. Alright, fine, you motherfucker. Bulwark, also known as Juan Garcetti. Also known as Wanker City. I'm gone. Let's, let's just run around here and see if we can't. I'm gone. Take in the sights right quick. What's this? Can we get that through the tin glass? I'm gone. Toadie, okay, I'm that gone. looks like fun. Let's see, have anyone been... Oh, that's what I want to talk to. A large red armor figure standing in place, apparently guarding the stairs beside him. You didn't mean to call it his ornate ar ar marks. armor marks him as an officer of the point, one who provides law enforcement for the city. A greetings! The man casually motions back toward the street. Move along, sir. And what are you doing here? Points toward the stairs beside him, which look to descend straight beneath the city. Guarding the stairway, sir. Why? Where's it lead? To the realm below. Seeing your expression, he continues. Under sickle. You may have heard it called. Any reason to keep your people from entering this place? He chuckles softly, the plates of his armor rattling with the movement. I'm watching for you when it comes out, sir. Things that don't belong in sickle proper. What are some of the things down there? Don't concern you with it. He, re he, reg he regards you curiously for a moment. You're considering going down there, aren't you? Well, be most cautious. Rumors abound of the worst sorts of creatures living down below. I had some other questions. No use asking here. Move along, sir. Fine, then, you motherfucker. All right. And the walkthrough recommends that there's great experience to be had here, but it's also great danger. So, mm, I might do that at some point. <laughs> Shut up, text! <sighs> so, am I going to talk with the other citizens of Sickle, or am I going to march down there and see what lies below. By now next time on the Big Man Plays! Planescape Torment requested by Bormack. Till then, Big Fatty Plus, Sayonara, and you know, if you go to buy a costume, you need to make sure that if you're going to buy a costume for a party, make sure no one else is buying it so you don't have to go and buy another costume. You know, make sure no one else is going as that. Unless you want to go as the same thing everyone else, then you can go and murder somebody. No, they won't be able to tell who it was because everyone's wearing the same costume. 